I don't think they're all hard. I think some of them are kind of easy. But uh, number one, state whether each sequence is arithmetic, geometric, or neither. So what is an arithmetic sequence? Um, adding. adding. So does it add the same thing over and over? Geometric sequence, does it multiply the same value over and over? And then if it's none of the above, like if it adds different values or multiplies different values or whatever, uh, that would just be neither. Okay. Uh, a, what's the pattern on one A? What's the pattern? Minus four. Minus four. So if, it's like adding negative four over and over again. So that is arithmetic. Comma, we're also supposed to write a formula for it in terms of T sub N. Okay, the first way we learned to do this was called explicit. And the other, the second way we learned to do it was called recursive. Recursive uses the previous terms to find a new term. Uh, but the first way we learned to do it is just like back up one step and then start adding or multiplying whatever. So if the pattern is minus four, what would come before 10? What minus four equals 10? 14. Okay, now, how do we subtract 4 over and over again? Right. Minus 4 n times. On the first term when n is 1, you want to subtract 4 once. On the second term when n is 2, you want to subtract uh, 4 twice. That's what minus 4 times 2 does. All right, anyways, uh, the other way, they didn't ask this, but I just want to show it real quick to... Uh, give an example the other way. Uh, recursive, you just do the previous term and then something to that. So on this one, you do the previous term minus 4. Also, you usually have to define the first term. What was the first term? 10. t sub 1 is 10. t sub n is t sub n minus 1. Previous term minus 4. You don't really have to write that part. B. Okay, what is the pattern? Neither. Yeah, it's plus three. What is the pattern now? Plus three plus five plus seven. Plus three plus five plus seven plus nine. It's like adding odds. Uh, it's not arithmetic because it's adding different values. Okay, this one, I, I don't know. It, I couldn't think of an easy way to like figure this one out. So when you're adding odds, uh, oh, I forgot to zoom out. There. Um, You guys recognize these numbers? Those are squares? Yeah. We mentioned them yesterday. It's 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared. Um, and if you look at it, though, they're also going up by, I guess you could say, like, 0 plus 1. They also go up by odds, interesting enough. So, um, B would be really easy to write recursively, but... <clears throat> Uh, let's see, what is it? 3, 6. Uh, what is it? 3, 6, 11, 18. So these are both going up 3, 5, 7, but what's the difference between these two? two. Yeah, these are two bigger. So this is just n squared plus 2. Plus two. You should put that one in the chat. That's where we go. <laughs> we'll call it Leo's problem. We'll put a number on it. Leo's not getting that one. 
Okay, C is a lot easier. What's the pattern on C? <coughs> uh, doing what now? What's the pattern? Multiply by negative three. Yeah, so when it's arithmetic and geometric, it makes it a lot easier to figure out. Uh, geometric, because we're multiplying by negative three. Um, if it was like divide by negative three, that would still be geometric because that's like multiplying by negative one third. Okay. How do we multiply by negative three over and over again? You just put negative three parentheses in? Yeah, exponents helps you multiply the same value over and over or even divide the same value over and over. So we kind of have to back up a step. So if we're multiplying by negative three, what would come before negative two? Well, if you're multiplying to go forward, to go backwards, you would divide. Negative two divided by negative three is two thirds. Okay, we want to multiply this value by negative three a bunch of times. So the way you multiply numbers over and over is with exponents. So pretty much all arithmetic sequences look like A, like with a 4N or you know, whatever, 2N, 6N, whatever it is. And all geometric sequences, when you need to multiply, look like this, like with the N as an exponent. Multiplying by a number makes you add that number over and over. Uh, putting the number in the exponent makes you multiply that number over and over. Okay, did I say that right? There we go. Okay. T sub 2 equals 6. T sub 6 equals 16. Find T sub 21. Okay, oh, also it tells us this is an arithmetic sequence. What does that mean if it's an arithmetic sequence? It's adding the same value over and over. So, how can we figure out what value we must be adding here? Yes. So from 6 to 16, we're going up by 10. But how many terms did we go up are between 2 and 6? 6 minus 2 is 4. To get from term 2 to term 3, to term 4, to term 5, to term 6, there's 4 terms. So if you divide that 10 by 4, you get... 2.5. So each term is increasing by 2.5. So how do we get to, to the 21st term? Uh, well, no. Can't multiply by Why can't we multiply by 21? Because the first term is not 2.5. If it was 2.55, those are multiples of 2.5, but these, it doesn't start at 2.5, it would start at actually 3.5. Okay, well, how many terms are there from the sixth term to the 21st term? How many terms are we going through? 15. 15. 21 minus 6 is 15. So that means we need to add on 15 of these to the sixth term. Um, yeah. Where did you get the four on the bottom? Because there's four terms between the second and the sixth term. Okay. To get, you have to move four terms. Yeah, so it must have added four things. So the ten is the gap. So you divide that by four to figure out what they added for each term. Okay. It's two point five. So there's fifteen terms left to go. So I remember on the homework on this one, they gave us like t sub one. Uh, I don't know, whatever, and we had to figure out like t 
a 25. Okay, that's actually a 24 term gap. There's, it's not. Anyways, um, whatever you're adding, you'd have to you'd have to add 24 times to this to get to that. Does that make sense? Because from one to 25, that's a 24 term gap. Anyways, uh, whatever that is, plus the 16 would give you the 21st term. Geometric sequence, T sub 3 is 9, T sub 6 is 9 eighths. T sub 12. All right, so this one's a, kind of the same question, but this time it's a geometric sequence. So what must be happening here? Mm -hmm. Geometric sequence means what? Multiply. multiply. So how do we figure out what we're multiplying by to get from there to there? Well, you can make it a formula. Um, how many times are we multiplying to get... Mm -hmm. Right. From 3 to 6, we must be multiplying something 3 times. So 9 times what... So nine, well, I guess we write like this. Nine times something times something times something times something should equal nine eighths. Or nine times n to the third should equal nine to the eighth, nine eighths. All right, how would we solve this for n? Divide by nine. Divide by nine. When you divide by 9, what happens? It's like multiplying by 1 eighth. That just goes away. So we get something cubed equals 1 eighth. Then what do we do? Cubed root. Cubed root of 1 eighth is 1 half. If you think about it, 9, nine is like 9 over 1 times a half is. 9 over 2 times a half is 9 over 4 times a half is 9 over 8. So yeah, multiplying by a half is what's happening. So if that's the common ratio, you guys remember that term? Uh, how do we get from the 6th term to the 12th term? Multiply. 6 times multiplied by 1 half. So in other words, we need to do 9 eighths times 1 half to the 6. It's one of the easier ones. Uh, I shouldn't say that. If we get it wrong, make you feel bad. So t sub one is one. T sub two is four. T sub n equals two. T sub n minus one plus. T sub n. Could you just plug in six? Okay. So these are. This is a recursive definition, and we have to find the sixth term. Can't plug in. Six. Where would you plug in six at? Just okay. plug one and four into that thing, right? Well, yeah. So, if you wanted to find, well, we know the first and second term. 
You have to start by finding the third term. To find the sixth term, okay, what does n minus 1 and n minus 2 mean? It means the previous two terms. So you can't find the sixth term unless you know the fourth and the fifth term. So you just got to kind of work your way up to it. T sub n minus 1, if we're looking for the third term, n is 3. So that would be 3 minus 1. So that would be the second term. Plus 3 minus 2 is 1. So this would be T sub 1, the first term. So this is 2 times the second term plus the first term. So 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is yeah, 9. So basically it's 2 times the previous term plus the previous previous term. That's kind of the pattern. Alright, so T sub 4 is uh, 2 times 9 plus 4, 22. Okay, this is the previous term. n minus 1 is one term before the nth term. Okay, t sub 5. So we're going to do 2 times this one, 44, plus, the, plus this one. n minus 2 is 2 less than 5. Okay, anyway, 44 plus 9 is 53. Okay, the sixth term is 2 times the fifth term plus the fourth term. So 106 plus 22. Give a recursive definition for the sequence 1, 5, 21, 85. Uh, I find that recursives are easier. If I use last words. 1, 5, 21, 85. Oops. Oh, I put that. 85. Okay. What is the pattern? Yeah, it's almost times four. Uh, yeah. Um, you can tell because they get bigger faster and faster if they're multiplying something. But um, yeah, one times four is four, and then that's one bigger than that. Five times four is 20, one bigger than that. 21 times four is 84. Yeah, so it is times four plus one. So on recursive, that's when you define the first term and then you just say, the nth term is the previous term, and what do you do to it? The previous term <coughs> times 4, plus going to do 6a on this one. Find the sequence of a positive three-digit integers ending in 4. Find an explicit formula for t sub n. Okay, positive three-digit integers ending in 4. What's the smallest positive three-digit integer that ends in 4? 104. Okay, to have three digits, it's got to be in the hundreds, right? Okay, what's the next three-digit integer that ends in a four? Okay, and then 124, 134. Okay, so that, anyway, that's the sequence, but we have to define it. Uh, it said recursively, didn't it? Yeah. Okay. No, it said, I was wrong, it said explicitly. 
Okay, explicit is what we're doing on number one. It's where you you do not use t sub n minus one. Uh, I I don't know if this will help you guys. I remember recursive because it sounds like recurring. Kind of has like the same root and like the previous terms recur in the next term. I don't know. Anyway, I'm not sure that. Helps. So. The explicit version was where we just back up one step. So what is the pattern here? Plus 10. Plus 10. So what must have come before this? 94. 104 minus 10 is 94. And then we want to add 10 n times. Once for the first term, twice for the second term. All right, find the sum of the first six terms. Okay, there was a formula, and I'll put these on the board. There's a geometric, an arithmetic sum formula, a geometric sum formula, and what was the other formulas for? Uh, was it the sum of an infinite series? that? Yeah, I'll, anyway, I'll put all these on the board. You don't have to memorize them. Uh, so this one said, uh, okay, what is the pattern on 7? Let's start with that. What is, how do you, yeah, how do you get from 27 to negative 9? Yeah, it's multiplying by negative 1 third, or dividing by negative 3, you could say. So it's a geometric series. Now, we just kind of switched. We went from, like, commas to adding so we went from sequences to series. Okay, they're not gonna try to trick you with that, but anyways, it's a subtle kind of thing, but. Um, anyways, the formula for the sum in a geometric series. So you have to know that it is geometric though. Okay, that part I will not tell you. Uh, but I will label it on the board. I'll say the sum of geometric series is this formula. You guys might kind of remember it. Well, yeah. Okay. What did the R stand for? The common ratio. That's the thing that you multiply mm -hmm. by over and over. Only a geom geometric series, at least. Uh, what did the N stand for? It stood for number of terms. T sub 1 stood for first term. First term. So that's kind of all you need to know. Uh, we already talked about the common ratio. What was the common ratio on this one? Negative one third. Okay, it's dividing by negative three or multiplying by negative one third. Uh, the first term on number seven is 27. So that goes right there. Okay, the common ratio is negative one third. What's n going to be? Six, because they told us they wanted the first six terms. I, you don't really need a formula. If they're only asking for six, I mean, you could just add them together. Wouldn't be that bad. It's when it gets longer. Whoops. So you guys probably remember plugging those things in. Last week, I imagine. You only have to add the first six terms, and they already wrote four of them for us. So the next one would be like negative one third and positive one ninth. You can just add all those together. Huh? You mean 1024 over 9? Mm, that's too big. Notice I did put parentheses around this fraction because you want to make the whole thing to the sixth power. Be careful, you didn't really need it down here. I don't, I'm not sure what you plugged in lately. Uh, hey, what briefly tell what the word limit means in mathematics? Uh, 
it's the value. We usually just get the right part, but I do kind of want to talk about this. You guys remember when they I'm trying to keep it as basic as possible. I don't think they use the word series. It doesn't necessarily apply to series, I guess. What did they say? An infinite sequence. Okay, they use sequence. Yeah, I guess that makes more sense. Kind of the same. All right. Okay, 9A. Uh, look, before we do that, let's... remind you of something. Okay, when there was fractions, uh, okay, what is this going to approach? If the degree on the numerator, the power on the numerator is bigger than the denominator, what happens? The top gets bigger faster, and therefore it approaches infinity. The top grows faster than the bottom, so it gets bigger and bigger. It just goes like this. Um, the number on top is divided by the number on bottom, and if the top is winning, it just keeps getting bigger. Okay, and if you switch those around, what happens? If, whoops. Well... So if I just like, I don't know, put it upside down. So if the power on the bottom is larger, what's going to happen? It's closer to zero. Right. Because it's like 1 over 100, 1 over 1,000, 1 over a million, 1 over a billion. If the bottom is winning, it approaches a really tiny fraction, which approaches zero. So if the top is winning, it approaches infinity. If the bottom is winning, it approaches zero. If it is a tie, and this is like 9a here, uh, I feel like this might be like number nine. I, can't, I was trying to make it up, but if it's a tie, what happens? So they both have an n squared as their highest power. That's called the degree. Um, yeah, the numbers in front, basically. These kind of just cancel each other out, and it just kind of reduces to whatever that is. So it would be 3 over 2. So number 9a, no, it is a little bit different. What is that going to approach as... Zero. No. You're right. The n squareds are tied. Okay. N squared is so much more powerful than N. As you get bigger and bigger and bigger, N just kind of fades into the background. doesn't matter. And the 1 and 5, totally useless. But the N squareds are tied, so they kind of cancel each other out. So it just approaches 3 fourths. So 9A is 3 fourths. It was a tie. All right. B. Now, B is not a fraction, so you remember doing these? You just kind of have to plug in, like, 1, 2, 3, and just kind of try to find out what the pattern is, or even if there is a pattern. Uh, let's see. If we plug in 1, let me think about this. It would be negative 1. If we plug in 2, it would be two. negative 2. Wait, positive 2. So I think the pattern is negative one, 
positive 2, negative 3, positive 4. Okay. Is that approaching something? No. It's actually diverging. It's like getting farther away from each other. So the limit does not exist. Or you say no limit. Okay, again, on B, if you want to plug it in your calculator, since it says pi, that would be radians, and your calculator would need to be set to radians. Okay, what we plugged in was 1 cosine of 1 pi, 2 cosine 2 pi, 3 cosine 3 pi. We just started plugging 1, 2, 3, and 3 in. C, uh, okay, you could plug stuff in. You might just be able to think about it without plugging stuff in. If you start multiplying 0 0.59 times 0 0.59 times 0 0.59, what's going to happen to your values? Right. When you multiply by anything less than 1, the values get smaller and smaller and smaller. Where are they going to approach? Zero. So, yeah, this is zero. This is definitely not a two-day assignment. We're almost done. Uh, we just got 11 and 12. Yeah, we'll just finish it tomorrow and then uh, start the test talk. We got a full class tomorrow. Basically, I'm going to repeat most of what we did today.